I wanted to talk to you today about how Nikon acquired RED and what a big deal it is. Let's get started. It wasn't that long ago that uh, the guy in charge of Nikon, the Japanese man in charge, made a statement that shocked me as an early adopter of Sony mirrorless cameras. He said that no professional will ever use a mirrorless camera to do their work. Now, that was a long time ago, you know, I mean, I guess. Uh, it wasn't, wasn't that long ago, actually, but Nikon has figured out that that was incorrect. And that man was sent packing uh, shortly after he made that comment. Um, the other day, there was news that Nikon had acquired the company Red, who makes very fine, good, excellent um, cinematic cameras, especially 4, 6, and 8K cameras. Um, Red is an incredibly valuable company to a company like Nikon, who has often sourced chips from Sony in the past. Now, to be honest, Sony has sort of only allowed their older chips to get sent to put into the Nikon cameras, and so they probably got a little tired of that and wanted to have uh, cutting-edge chips of their own, like Canon and like Sony. Um, and so for them to acquire uh, RED is, is a really, really big deal. Um, there's going to be a number of things that are important about that acquisition. Number one is the cross-pollination, if you will, of patents. When RED is acquired by Nikon, they're going to share with Nikon all of their patents that they've made, things they've learned about cinema film making. This is incredibly value, valuable uh, knowledge and information. Uh, there'll be production techniques uh, to produce the cameras. There'll be things that they've done in their line to improve speed, accuracy, and also, most importantly, stability. Um, but the big thing is the sensors. Um, really, when you, when you read about the Nikon acquisition of RED, you should understand it as Nikon acquiring a sensor company more than a cinematic film company that makes equipment. Um, it's interesting that the RED cameras are mostly equipped and enabled with EF glass and RF glass, which is a clear competitor to their own Nikon mount, which you know goes the wrong way, as we like to say, if you're not a Nikon shooter, it goes the right way if you do. Um, everything about Nikon glass is opposite of everybody else, so it mounts in the reverse direction, it focuses in the re reverse direction, and the aperture ring is in the reverse direction of everything else. Um, so that's going to be interesting. Um, but I think the biggest deal, again, is the sensors. So Nikon is acquiring a sensor company, a very high-end sensor company that specializes in cinematic sensors. And this is really important because Nikon will have a leg up, um, certainly on Canon, who has made their own sensors for years. Um, RED is a leader in the industry, definitely, um, and Canon or Nikon doesn't have anything in the realm of the upper end RED cameras. Um, RED has a global shutter camera, for instance. Uh, it's, a, it's an APS-C camera, but still they have their own global shutter. And so at a time when the A93 is launched, just a couple months after that happens with, a, with the first full frame global shutter in the marketplace in a still camera, all of a sudden Nikon is acquiring RED. It's a really smart move. It's a really smart move. Now, whether Nikon will be able to um, utilize all the benefits of the employees of RED, their engineers, uh, their patents, and all that stuff will remain to be seen. But it's a big deal, and it, it really is a smart move. Nikon's DNA is all still photography and microscopes. That's what they know. They're going to be bringing people into the company that will have expertise in film and cinema. And this is a big change for Nikon. Um, they don't have like tons and tons and tons of motion pictures shot on their cameras like Sony does, for instance. Um, so this is a big deal. Now, part of the acquisition will be how many employees will they keep and how many will they let go? And which ones will, be they, will, will they be letting go? Um, you know, the, the age-old uh, form seems to be to get rid of the people that make the most money, and that could be a huge mistake because the people at Red that were they're there from the foundation of the company, those are the ones you want to keep and um, that understand the technology the best, perhaps. Um, so we'll see what happens, but uh, it's really exciting, and I'm I'm glad to see you know if Nikon is stronger, then Sony is stronger. 
if Canon is stronger, then Sony is stronger. So I'm, I'm actually really happy about this acquisition. I think it's a great thing. It'll be good for Sony in the long haul, especially if Nikon can really truly capitalize on these sensors that are in the RED cameras. If they can start uh, putting some of that technology into their own sensors, that'll be a big deal. And one last thing I wanna mention, for, the, for years now, I've been preaching the same thing over and over, that people are buying cameras based on um, their specifications instead of buying the sensor. It's such a problem. People do not understand how important the sensor is. The sensor is the heart of any mirrorless camera. And, um, you know, basically, you know, Nikon in acquiring RED has figured out um, that they are a good bet for the future, and that's smart. So I applaud Nikon for doing this. I just hope they can make the right changes at Nikon as they incorporate RED's technology into their cameras that will benefit them in the long haul. Thanks so much for watching.